afternoon, everybody. Thanks uh, for inviting us here today. Uh, it was a nice, pleasant drive. Just a little accident outside of 71 here, but uh, always good to see new people as well as some old faces. So, uh, and, and just had a big training in Columbus yesterday, so three of you are going to hear some of the same stuff again, so apologies for that. But uh, hopefully the, for the rest of you, this will be some good information. So. This is going to be very boiled down and very condensed, but I want to just mention two of the, two of the major emphasis of our, of our office. We're, uh, as I mentioned, we're a small five-person office in the department. Our focus is providing capital housing, funds for, to develop housing uh, through dollars that are uh, provided to us through the state legislature. Uh, tomorrow we start a new uh, biennial uh, year, fiscal year 17 and 18 and we just received our appropriations. And so this first page is our plan about how we want to go about uh, informing uh, folks and making dollars available for that. So in this, in this coming biennium, we have been allocated $23 million for uh, capital housing. That's the largest allocation we've ever received through the legislature. And because of that, it will allow us to kind of open the doors for opportunities for housing that we haven't been able to do in the past because of our limited uh, dollars and the priority to fund housing for people coming out of developmental centers uh, and out of uh, ICFs, in the community care facilities. So what this says is that we are opening up uh, housing opportunities for people still coming out of those two places, but as well as uh, for housing to, to avoid institutionalization and to address uh, people who are going on a waiver who are on a county's waiting list. So that could be people living with aging caregivers, any situation where the, the, the person receives a waiver. So um, there is a process for which uh, a county and a housing corporation would apply, send us in an application, they might say, hey, we, we've identified for people who want to live together, we have found this home at such and such an address, we want to apply for these funds. For these funds. Uh, it gets a little more complicated than that. Anything we do with the state has to be a little more complicated than that. But in, in short, it's really a, a fairly straightforward situation. There are some rules around this that we have to follow that are hard and fast rules, and then there are some priorities that we kind of establish internally to make those dollars stretch. 23 million sounds like a lot of money, but it really isn't once you start boiling it down to anywhere from $250,000 per home. You know, you can do the math and figure out there it's not an endless pot of money. So what we say for this round of funding, funding is that we'll fund up to 120% of a county's median home value. There is a site on the, on the, on the website that is listed here that gives every county's profile and among those profiles is a county's median home value. Now I don't know what it is in, in uh, Hamilton County, in Franklin County it's $150,000 is, is the middle point, so half or above, half or below that. So we will fund 20% uh, above that or another $30,000. So $180,000 is the amount that we will provide, we would provide funding for a home of that nature. Now that's the purchase price. There are also funds available if it needs renovations or uh, accessibility modifications on top of the purchase price you know, of those homes. The other, the other limiter is that we cannot participate in a project where the purchase, va the purchase price is more than 110% of the appraised value. And I, and I think you can understand why that's the case. Uh, we just, because what happens is that the county board it's a 15-year commitment for use, meaning the housing corporation and the county board agree that this property is going to be used for at least 15 years for people with developmental disabilities. The county board holds the mortgage. So if something were to happen, it's the county board that would be held responsible financially for that property, and they're not going to want to have a property that's not saleable for them to get their money back. So that's why that restriction is there. So we're going to start receiving, uh, accepting applications uh, July 18th, I think is what it says. Um, it's going to be in a kind of a first come, first serve basis. Um, we will be, we expect uh, a lot of applications only because we have.
haven't been accepting them for a while now because our funds were limited. So uh, we're, this memo went out uh, last week to all the county boards, to all the housing corporations. So we're expecting, we've got a lot of calls, so we're expecting a lot of interest and people to come to us with their projects that they have in mind you know, for the funding. So um, that was a real quick snippet. Yeah, Jim? Do you still only look to 90% of the project that it was last time, or is that going now? Well, we still want, we still want to see a local effort to contribute to the project. We're not requiring 90%. But I think what it says here is that we, we strongly encourage housing corporations to identify and leverage non-DODD funds. So that can be <coughs> your own reserve or your own funds, county board funds. I mean, we're going to use that as part of our evaluation. Um, it's not a hard and fast number. I, I, you know, we, we try not to be, I mean, we are bureaucrats, but we try not to be, you know, the bureaucrat where, you know, we don't give an inch. I mean, we understand situations vary, circumstances vary. So we're willing to listen to whatever story you have, um, but just understand that we may push back a little bit and say, well, okay, but you, we really want you to do this. Or we really need you to show some local effort to contributing to this project. Um, but we try not to be, a, to the extent that we're limited by law, none of us want to go to jail. So you know, to the extent we're limited by law and by rule, we will try to understand what you're all wanting to do. Okay. Yeah. So it says the initial application is limited to two per county. So yes. these come through the county? Then? Yes. They will come through the, the county and <coughs> the, county, the county board and or the housing corporation. Every county has a little different relationship about how they do that. I think, I think in Hamilton County it will come through the housing corporation, working closely with the county board. Other counties, it comes through the county board, so it just it just kind of varies. And again, the reason we just accept two at one time, obviously, is we want everybody to have a chance to to participate. The um, so again, I, you know, if you have any questions, uh, you know, we're, we'll hang around a little bit afterwards, or uh, my contact information is on here. You can also go to our website. And the directions are, are on the back there. Just kind of click on all our forms, the descriptions, the applications are all on our website. Yes, sir. Is there any restrictions on who owns the property? Well, it has to be it has to be a nonprofit by law. And so typically what that is and it's the local housing corporation who owns the property. Yes. But it's not The way our rules are written is there needs to be a master, a master contract or an agreement between the county board and a nonprofit. Now, in, in most counties, what that nonprofit is is the long established housing corporation. It doesn't have to be, or it doesn't need to be exclusively one entity. It can be other corporations, nonprofits, but there still needs to be an agreement between the county board and that entity. So. And the county board could have agreements with more than one corporation if they, if they choose. It needs to be a nonprofit. A nonprofit who, whose mission, whose corporation is states in its bylaws, it is established for, specifically for, housing for persons with disabilities. Something to that effect. It just can't be any nonprofit. Okay. Thank you. So here, um, just to, for those of you who want to try to put these words. gears are working. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> Alice, do you want to just explain it here, like who the players are, and make this personal to Hamilton County? Because um, I think it, some people are still new to some of the jargon. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we actually have two housing networks that we contract with in Hamilton County. Uh, the housing network uh, that Jim runs and also Foundation for the Challenge, okay. which is out of Columbus area. And there could be more. I mean, there is no limit on, on that. Um, so again, the county board is, is kind of the pivotal entity between, with whom you, they hold a mortgage. So you, you should probably want to communicate and make sure that, that those entities are working with the county board you know, in that. So Fernando, 
question. Is have there been any instances where the capital funds were used for something other than a single family home? Uh, for instance. Um, for instance, anything else? I mean, is it, is it just <laughs> single family? Because some some building. of the yeah. some of the presentations we'll be hearing today are people are imagining apartment complexes. Okay. Right? Well, actually, I'm going to let Ted talk about that because okay. that's what Ted was specifically I'm hired. Like that. Ted talk. That's <laughs> that's yeah. what. Yeah. Yeah. So so to kind of to address that, and then and then we'll lead into that. Um, historically, since 1988 when this program was created, we have kind of followed this traditional model of funding these up to four person homes where four, up to four people live together. We have on some very small occasions contributed a small amount of money to larger projects, but that was kind of a really not traditional way of doing things. One of the things we want to do that, that Ted will talk about is expanding our ability to leverage our dollars into other funders other funders and models of projects. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I won't steal his thunder. Um, One other question. Yes. Uh, could you just talk a little bit about, um, it says that the funds would be used to develop housing for certain categories in no particular priority order. Mm -hmm. But yet I know, I mean, I know the money is limited. So when projects are being considered for funding, <coughs> Which of these will be the one that gets priority? Whichever one comes in first. So. You mean first come, first serve? Yes. Yes. So, for example, in the past two years, we have only funded projects in that in those first two bullet points. Okay. And we said that at the beginning. We right, said right. we said our priorities this year are only people leaving VCs and only people leaving ICFs. You know, we didn't fund. We did one project because of an emergency situation, but you know, we didn't fund any others. Now we're saying we're going to open up to all these other categories. Just because those two are listed first, if, we, if our first 10 projects are all people coming off the county board's waiting list, then those are the ones that will get funded. We're not going to wait. Okay? Now there will come a point where if we're out of money, then we have to stop everything. Would you fund that? Or when you say four square houses. Uh, four apartments. Oh, um, quadplexes? Yes. Yes. Yeah, oh, our current rules allow us to do duplexes and quadplexes. Okay. So yes. And it could be for purchase and or renovation. You know, we'd want, obviously, we'd want to make sure that the location is in a safe, accessible location. You know, all those kind of things. But that's where we rely initially on the housing corp in the county to come to us with those projects. Any other questions on that? I'm just going to say a couple words about rental assistance. This is a program that's been now in starting its second year. Uh, this is general revenue dollars. It's from a different pot of money. We have $750,000 each of the next, this current year ending today, and then for next, uh, next fiscal year. And this, uh, again, statute, this is a brand new program last year. Uh, it's, it's DODD dollars specifically for rental assistance. Um, rental subsidies, um, it's kind of modeled after the Section 8 in terms of eligibility. It is very, it's a pilot project, so it's very narrowly uh, uh, applicable. So people, again, people coming out of developmental centers or people com coming out of an ICF. So it is more narrow. Uh, applied than our larger housing dollars that I just talked about. I know Hamilton County is has, is participating in that. I think they have five or six people uh, because they're, they're working with uh, 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 SODC, Southern Ohio Developmental Center, in terms of people coming out of there, as well as probably some uh, local ICFs where people are converting. So uh, again, that's these are two different programs. They different kinds of money, different kinds of priorities and, and target populations. It's it's not going to cure all the ills that 
are going on and all the needs that are going on. If the rental assistance program works well, we go back to the legislature next year and maybe ask for even more money. So we may be coming back to this groups like this to maybe voice your support to your local legislators to you know, support additional funding for rental assistance. Um, so, um, any questions on that real quick? I, I'm sorry, I'm, I know I'm kind of rushing through a bit, but, but I know you have a big agenda and I want Fred to be able to talk for a couple of minutes. No, that's too. okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, part of, what, uh, part of what we realized very early on is that I, I, I grew up in the DD system. I, I'm a DD professional for 40 years now, so I can talk backwards and forwards about DD stuff, but when I came to the Capital Housing Office, we because we wanted to put more emphasis on housing for, for folks, I soon learned that I was very ill-suited to deal with the big world of housing. I mean, some of you people may be more familiar, but you, you know, we have our own set of acronyms and things. Housing's got, we got nothing on them, <laughs> believe me. So it became very apparent to us that we needed to make this really work, we needed someone who knew housing. Not necessarily DD, but housing. And so, long story short, we hired Ted in March, and, and he'll describe what he's been working on, what his, what his priorities are. 